Hey everybody, welcome back to Battle Ready Inc. Today, I'm going to be going over and condensing what I think are going to be the best list for each color for the 1.0 release. Let's get into this. Alright, so we all pretty much know that the best deck of this game for 1.0 is probably going to end up being Omnimon. I mean, just case in point, Omnimon is super good in this game. So a lot of people are going to be want to play him. And uh, you're going to be looking at blue or red as the top deck of this format. Um, I'm going to say that in my opinion, and as well as others, uh, it's going to be blue. I've got blue pulled up right here. But, but what makes blue so much better than red, right? You have stuff like Gabumon, who's just going to let you uh, get free draws. You have uh, option cards like Vulcan's Hammer that give you free memory. But what I like about blue more than the fact that it can play Omnimon is I love the Metal Garurumon strategy that it has, right? So when attacking, you get to play the level 4 uh, from your Digivolution sources, level 4 below, and then what you use is the Garurumon that lets you unsuspend so then you can just attack again with the Metal Garurumon and again dis, you know, detach another material. What I like about that is it just gives you so much on the board at once. So you have, unlike Red, and I'll get into the Red, Red's about building up one big pillar, right, and then dropping Omnimon on top of that pillar, whereas Blue, they build up this pillar and then all of a sudden the pillar splits and then you have a nice field presence to go along with that Omnimon whenever it's time, right? So not only can you just Digivolve a lot faster, cheaper, more uh, memory efficient than Red can, and uh, you also have a better field presence. So uh, that's what I'm going for for Blue. I think uh, going with the Metal Guru Mon strategy is going to be the way to go. And, uh, and I have a feeling that's going to be the best deck of the format. Uh, if you want to see a full list breakdown of any of these, uh, put it in the comments below. You want to see what my list, my personal list that I'm going to be bringing is going to consist of. Uh, let me know and I'll go ahead and make a video for you guys. But I know there are plenty out there, so definitely feel free to look at other people's uh, to get an idea for yourself of you know the kind of list uh, that I'm talking about. All right, going on. So we're going to look up here at red here. And uh, so this is going to be, I think, the number two list. Basically, again, we're being we get to play Omnimon with this, and uh, and unfortunately, Omnimon is just very difficult to deal with. It's not like you can just beat over it very easily. Uh, you have to have other cards. You can't just have one super card that's going to do it. You have to have multiple cards at once that are going to go into it to be able to overcome that strategy. So what, what's this pillar of that I was speaking of earlier, right? And, uh, and I think that's mainly going to be the Greymon line. Uh, I think he just he can hit so hard. But I'm actually not talking about the, the one that comes in the set. Uh, I think this one's going to be really good at 1.5. Uh, the reason I say that is because uh, I like his effect of not triggering security effects. Uh, while you could use that now very easily just to just go right past all those. Um, for the pillar kind of, you know, just super one, I really like the starter deck War Greymon. Uh, if you build just a very War Greymon or Greymon specific line, uh, being able to get a whole bunch of security attack, you could just about push for game in one turn. Um, you just kind of stun them out for a little bit until you build up the perfect War Greymon line. And then you can just push for four security and uh, very easily push for game next turn. Uh, so that's kind of like what I'm liking first it's super aggro so if you want to play just a super aggro deck uh, I think that War Greymon line is probably the best route to go uh, but beyond that again you're basically once you do that trick you're gonna be going into Omnimon immediately afterwards so then you kind of don't have any use for the rest of the cards in his in his stack so that's kind of the trade-off, uh, so you got to be kind of careful with that. You got to definitely plan to push for game the next turn after you drop that Omnimon. Uh, so yeah, you just push for four security, 
and uh, with the War Greymon, and then drop the Omnimon in the next turn, push for game, right? So, uh, very, very aggro. A bit of a glass cannon. If you don't play it right, then, uh, or if you just get terrible luck, then you can very easily lose tempo and, uh, and fall off. Um, I do have one mention that I want to put out there uh, for this, and that's going to be a, a nice little tech card that goes very well with this, and uh, and that's going to be from the set two of the original, and that's the, the Volcanic Dramon, because you just play it right to delete all your opponents, basically all their rookies, as well as uh, some of their champions. Uh, 4,000 or less DP, there's plenty of uh, champions that are at 4,000 DP, so being able to just blanket the whole field. And what's cool about this is uh, you can play Omnimon right on top of that. So you're going to want to play it for its uh, its play value and not its evolution. I've gone over this before in other videos. and uh, But then on top of that, once it's on the field, you can just use it for your Omnimon. And I think that's uh, super great. So yeah, Omnimon right here, your level 7. Uh, and evolve it over right over that and what's great is you can play this in the blue Omnimon deck as well this the volcanic Dramon you can fit in either deck super easily because you're not going to evolve it so while you can evolve it in red which you would probably never want to you can run it in the blue and just play it like normal and then drop the Omnimon on top of it next turn uh, it is a hefty chunk of memory at 11 so uh, volcanic Dramon a great option for both of those decks and uh, and I think just a great uh, utility card in the game in general especially early on because Rookie Rush is gonna be super popular uh, in the first few weeks alright so going in the third best deck of the format I'm actually kind of at a tie between black and purple it's probably the right answer is purple but personally I just think that I'm gonna enjoy playing black more than purple so that's kind of why I have it at a tie, but it's probably realistically purple is going to be better than black. Um, and uh, so the strategy is going in for uh, for purple here. Um, some are doing this, uh, the Metal Guru Mon. Uh, you're going to play the level 3 from your trash uh, when attacking, so you can just keep uh, bringing back those uh, level 3s. So it's kind of good for a sort of rookie rush strategy. Uh, I've gone over it. Uh, talked about it in the past, but with uh, like Piedmon, right? Piedmon also on play lets you bring back level 4 or lower from your trash. So I think uh, Purple has kind of its own little Rookie Rush kind of strategy going on here. And you just get to keep playing those guys out and then die, and they die, but you get to keep bringing them back. Whereas other Rookie Rush strategies, it's all about playing just a whole new one, a whole new one, a whole new one. Whereas purple, it's about just killing them over and over and bringing them back just to crash them again, just to bring them back. And, uh, and I think Piedmon and Metal Garumon is going to be a pretty cool strategy, pretty fun strategy to run there. Um, but also, they have the ability to play Millennium Mon. And I think Millennium Mon is just a great card in general. Um, so you get to return one of your opponent's Digimon to the bottom of the deck. So he's a great answer to Omnimon. He just instantly outs Omnimon. It's not like he's returning it to hand or anything like that. He's just going to the bottom of the deck. They will never see that card for the rest of the game. I mean, just that's all there is to it. And uh, and then on Deletion, you just get to bring him right back. So uh, he might not have the highest DP. 13,000 is still nothing to laugh at. Uh, again, you're not going to be attacking over Omnimon with this guy. You're just going to be sending Omnimon, Omnimon away. So, uh, Millenniumon, great option to have here for purple. Uh, no matter which strategy you're, you're really playing, uh, there's a couple different ones out there, a couple different purple strategies, and I think he fits realistically in pretty much all of them, uh, mostly because he's a great answer to Omnimon. All right, so with that said, we're going to go look at black now. Uh, I think black is a little more at least as a 1.0 very set in what they have available as a good strategy and I think it's gonna be kind of just a uh, either you can go with the the war Greymon route right where you just build him kinda of like with the red strategy you build up this really perfect war Greymon 
that's got you know everything and he gets to reboot and he's got blocker and he gets all these buffs um, but also so they have high andromon which is a great level six because it's only a two cost to evolve and then that lets you just go into millennial mon so again black has the millennial mon option as well again to handle omnimon it just when a deck like that is so popular like the the blue and possibly the red omnimon strategies being able to answer that is going to be super crucial uh in the 1.0 release so ultimately ultimately with the black i think he's just going to be a it's going to be a lot quicker uh you have you're a lot more memory costed efficient than other strategies i feel like so you can rush your strategy out a lot quicker than other decks can that need like this very specific setup and uh, black can just do it so much quicker the problem is if you don't do it fast enough then other decks are going to blow you out and that's the problem i feel black has is uh they've got some really well i say some they've got one really cool strategy that that looks like a lot of fun but if that doesn't work that's it you don't really have any other ways to contend with anything all right going into that fifth slot now uh we have green i think green's going to get a whole lot better with 1.5 uh we've been seeing it in the tournament results uh, it's just been stomping right here lately. I know a lot of people were super excited when uh, the the new set three released in Japan, and so when 1.5 hits early on, uh, some people are looking at Hercules Kabuterimon, and he's a, definitely a fan favorite for sure. Uh, Piercing's always nice. Um, he has this, the really cool ability end of attack twice per turn. You can unsuspend this Digimon by decreasing your memory by three. Uh, so potentially you have this nice option to push for game. Uh, they're pretty cost efficient for digivolving up to him. I mean, ones, twos, and zeros. I mean, that's that's pretty great. You don't have to worry about anything too much to get all the way up to him at a, at a six. Problem is, there's no level seven option available. That's you know works like purple and uh, black have the Millennium Mon, which is a great answer to your opponent's bosses, or Omnimon for red and blue who, again, is a great option for bosses to handle your opponent's bosses. Uh, green doesn't have anything like that. So uh, that's why, unfortunately, that's why I put him in, in the fifth slot currently is because of that. They just don't have any good answers for those that bigger stuff. Uh, while they can do some really cool damage, uh, I also want to point out that they do have uh, the Tyrannomon line, which is super fun. It looks super awesome. Uh, my only issue with them is that they only have the one tamer in Taiga, uh, so you're gonna be maximizing out on four of him. So you really got to make it count. But the thing, the nice thing is, they gave you the entire Tyrannom online, so you get the regular one here, the champion. So when digivolving, you know, you get that option to search for your tamer card, right? You get to dig deeper to try to find the the right tamer card that you're looking for. Um, and then you, if he's not there, you get to place all those cards to the bottom of the deck. So then you have an increased chance of the next set of cards having him. So uh, definitely a must to run the, the Tyrannomon as well uh, if you're going to be running this line. And then Tyrannomon, he just play, or Metal Tyrannomon, he just plays well with Rust, giving uh, Rust the uh, the ability to unsuspend itself so you just get to keep attacking right this digimon can attack your opponents unsuspended right so that's why you want the tamer uh, when this digimon deletes one of your opponent's digimon in battle and survives suspend one of your opponent's digimon right so taiga's ability is gives your uh, tyrannomon piercing so it's it a great strategy it all plays really well together it's a little difficult to set up because you really need to have kind of this like kind of perfect team it doesn't have to be completely perfect I mean you can just drop rust Tyrannomon out there with Taiga and just getting that piercing but being able to uh, unsuspend yourself to just keep going and uh, with the others as well the metal Tyrannomon isn't as needed Tyrannomon is a must for being able to just search for the ones you need um, and then, the, of course, the rust on top of that, uh, just to kind of complete the whole strategy. So being able to just repeatedly attack, clear your opponent's field, and clear their security at the same time is uh, a wonderful strategy. All right, and then unfortunately, bringing up the rear is yellow. We all know why. So if you want to play yellow, you don't really have a whole lot of options. They have some really cool stuff, right? They have a lot of the angel cards, which is great. 
Uh, they have the Slash Angemon, which I think is a great card. He's a very low cost to play, and you know he's only a level six, and you get a drop 8,000 DP off of one of your opponent's Digimon, right? And at 8,000 DP himself, if you drop him and your opponent has the Omnimon, this is your answer to Omnimon, because he's going to drop it down to 7,000 attack, and then you can attack over it with the Slash Angemon. But yeah, so it's nice that Yellow has the answer to uh, almost really any boss. Anything you're going to take 8,000 DP off, you're going to be able to run over with Slash Angemon. There's nothing that's going to be higher than that, uh, at least at the time of making this, at 1.0, you don't have to worry about anything else. Overly, what I like about the, the yellow is the fact that it can just kind of almost outlast, as long as you're not playing against something like Rookie Rush that is just pummeling you super fast. Uh, this deck can really just outlast a whole lot of strategies uh, just with that security recovery, security recovery over and over. Um, eventually, you're just going to whittle away your opponent just gradually attacking their security over time while you just continuously replenish yours, replenish yours. And I think that's kind of the strategy that I would go with on yellow is to just do that. Just keep bringing your security uh, stacks back up and just slowly chipping away at your opponent. Uh, when you need to answer them, you have cards that answer what their strategies might be. So like the Slash Angemon is a great uh, counter to any boss that they're going to drop on you. So uh, make sure that you can attack with your Slash Angemon as soon as you play it, as well as make sure that they're suspended so you can actually attack that one. Uh, just uh, throwing that out there, I think those are going to be pretty important uh, things to worry about. But again, they have great answers to lots of different strategies, and I think that's a super important uh, skill to have. I know I still have it at the bottom, but that's not to say it's not unplayable. I think every deck here is playable. There's just other decks that are a bit more playable than the others, right? There's going to be others that are better and better, more meta, more worried about winning. Um, however, as those decks get better, they get increasingly more expensive, okay? So, like Omnimon at the top, yeah, when you're going to be shelling out $50 or to $80 per copy of Omnimon, and you need four copies of that bad boy, yeah, that deck's going to be expensive. So depending on your locals, you may never even run into Omnimon. And I think that is also a super important thing to consider, is depending on your play style and depending on your local scene, that everyone's talking about Omnimon, Omnimon, you may never even run into it. Going into affordable, I posted it, posted it the other day, uh, my Rookie Rush strategy. It's what I'm going to be playing opening weekend. All the cards in it are rare or less, so it's going to be super cheap, super affordable. Uh, and I think that's going to be easily, I don't know, I guess it just kind of depends on where you're, where you're sitting at. Opening weekend, I think it's going to be top tier, number one deck for sure. So make sure to check it out. Just because the reason I say that is people aren't going to be able to assemble an entire Omnimon deck in one weekend, opening weekend, right? They just, there's no way you're going to be able to get four copies of an $80 card, like, from the group of people sitting around you, you know? I just, I don't see it happening. Unless you're at, like, a huge, massive locals. I mean, a huge locals. And everyone just maxed out on product. I just, and especially with the reduction that uh, locals, you know, the amount of product they're getting, I just don't see them being able to pour, pull four Omnimons. Um... And then also, everyone willing to sell it or trade it to you. So, they're going to be wanting to play it themselves, right? So, I wouldn't worry about Omnimon too much, at least for a couple weeks. And, uh, and check out these other strategies in the meantime. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please support the channel in any way you can. Just liking the video or subscribing is a huge, huge help. And if you really want to support the channel, consider checking out my Patreon. There's a link in the description below for it. You can get access to my Discord server as well as some other cool incentives. Also, check out my official merch store. There's a link in the description below for my Teespring account. You get access to all my uh, cool merch that I've got on there as well as some other cool stuff, cool phone cases, that sort of thing. But like I said, any kind of support is always appreciated. Just simply liking the video can go a very, very long way for me. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.